Meadow is a family board game where you become wanderers fighting for the title of the most skilled observer. Your amazing adventure with nature will last between 60 and 90 minutes and can be experienced by one to four players, ages 10 or older. During the game, you collect cards in order to create habitats, complementing them with species of plants and animals observed during your trek, and collect landscapes and discoveries that will remind you of your trips. At the end of the game, the winner is the player with the most valuable collection. In the game box you will find the main board, two two-sided campfire boards, two block tokens for the campfire boards, 184 cards, four foldable deck holders, a round marker, 11 basic goal tokens, Goal tokens for games using envelope U, big encounters, 20 path tokens, 5 in each of the 4 colours, 12 bonus tokens, 3 in each of the 4 colours, 28 road tokens, a first player token, 5 envelopes, 6 cards in each, the rule book, and a card index. The components also include elements for solo play mode four colour markers and the solo play game token. Envelopes include five thematic sets of cards which are independent expansions for the game. Because of the advanced rules of those cards, we recommend you not use them in the first few games. You will learn more about those envelopes at the end of this video. Begin the setup by placing the main game board in the middle of the table next to the main board place one of the two campfire boards, with the side showing the symbol for the corresponding number of players. Here is the symbol for the number of players. Place the road tokens next to the board within easy access to all players. Place the three deck holders in the cutout spots on the main board and the fourth deck holder next to the board. Divide the cards according to their backs and create four decks. Shuffle each of the decks separately and place them in the corresponding deck holders, decks W, S and E in the holders on the board, and the end deck in the holder next to the board. The end deck will be needed later in the game. Fill all of the spots on the board with the face-up cards of the corresponding decks. The arrows on the board will help you do it correctly. The main board is ready. Now prepare the campfire board. Shuffle the goal tokens and randomly place one token at a time on the square spots. Return the unused goal tokens to the box. If you are playing a two or three player game, prepare the block tokens and block the correct number of notches in the campfire board. When playing a two player game, block two notches and in a three player game, one notch. You can't use these notches for the entirety of the game. Place the round marker on the first rock of the round tracker. It's marked with an arrow to make things easier. Now it's time to prepare the players. Each player gets five path tokens in the colour chosen by the player. In a four-player game, return the token with the question mark symbol to the box. Three bonus tokens of the matching colour, one road token with a visible road symbol, one two-sided starting ground card. Place your elements in the space in front of you. Give the first player token to the person that was last stung by a bee. This will be the player who starts the game. You just need cards to begin the game. If this is your first game, randomly deal each player one W card, two S cards, one E card and one N card. If this is not your first game, the player to the right of the starting player adds to their hand four cards from one chosen row and one N card. Refill the empty slots on the board with cards from corresponding decks. Then other players repeat the same steps, in counterclockwise order. Each player starts the game with five cards in hand. Before the first round, each player chooses the side of their starting ground card. Place it in your meadow area with the chosen side face up as your first card. You are ready to play the game. 
Your meadow game consists of a certain number of rounds, which is reflected by the number of stones on the round tracked on the campfire board. You take your turns in clockwise order, starting with the first player. During your turn, you must perform an action, placing your path token in one notch of the main board or campfire board. You can place your token only in an unoccupied notch. Each path token allows you to take one of two action types described on its top and bottom parts. In order to take a card from the main board, place your path token in one of the unoccupied notches in the main board. Resolve the top part of the played token by drawing a card that is as many spots away from the path token as indicated by the number on the token. In a two and three player game, you will also use the path token with a question mark symbol. Placing it in a notch of the main game board allows you to take any card from the indicated row or column. You decide which value to apply to the question mark. Immediately refill the empty spot with a card from the corresponding deck. Additionally, you may then play one card from your hand into your meadow or surroundings area. There are four types of cards in the game. Ground cards, observation cards, landscape cards and discovery cards. Each card has a few key elements that we will discuss later. Ground cards have a ground symbol, which will be useful for playing cards in the future. Play ground cards in your meadow area to the right or left side of any already played ground cards. You can have up to 10 such cards in your meadow area. Remember, you can't play ground cards on top of other cards. The symbol in the top left corner will be useful for playing cards in the future. Observation cards are records of your observations made during a trek and they represent types of animals, plants and fungi as well as human-made creations, buildings and surrounding items. You can recognize them by their vertical arrangement and victory point values. You can play an observation card either on top of a ground card or on another observation card if the requirements to play the card are met, which happens when your meadow area has all the required symbols visible. The requirement symbols are visible in the middle section of an observation card. When playing an observation card, make sure to note the following. Place a card with one requirement symbol on top of a card with the required symbol. If you have several cards that have the required symbol, choose one of them. Place a card with two or more requirement symbols on top of a chosen card that has any of the required symbols. Remember, all the required symbols have to be visible. Only then can you cover one of them. Cards that have a ground symbol as a requirement must be placed in a column that contains the ground symbol, either directly on top of a matching ground card or on top of a column where that ground card is at the bottom. If the requirement symbols are divided with a slash, you need only one out of two presented symbols. You decide which symbol to choose. On some of the cards, the requirement symbols are marked with arrows. You must play the card in a column immediately adjacent, on the right or left, to a column with the card with the required symbol. Landscape cards present the sites of the surrounding areas where you trek. They are horizontal cards which, when played, give you precious victory points. They are marked with this symbol. In order to play a landscape card in your surroundings area, you must have a road token in your supplies. If the card requires only a road token, play it in your surroundings area and place one of the unused road tokens below it. Flip the token so the side without the road symbol is visible, marking it as used. When playing a landscape card that requires a road token and other symbols, you must have all of the required symbols in your meadow area. Again, you play the card, place a road token below it, then flip the token to the side without the road symbol. You do not lose the required symbols. You may still use them to fulfill the requirements of other cards. On the discovery cards are items you find during your trek. Just like landscape cards, discovery cards are horizontally oriented and give you victory points. They are marked with this symbol. Discovery cards require landscape cards to be played. When playing a discovery card, Place it on a previously played landscape card in your surroundings area. When playing a discovery card that requires only the landscape symbol, 
place it on one of your unused landscape cards. If the discovery card requires a landscape symbol and other symbols, remember that in order to play it, you must have all of the requirement symbols in your meadow area. After placing the discovery card on one of your unused landscape cards, you do not lose the required symbols and you may still use them to fulfill the requirements of other cards. Additionally, when playing an observation, landscape or discovery card, if you don't have a required symbol in your area, you may discard any two cards from your hand to ignore one requirement symbol of the played card. You can do this multiple times. However, you cannot ignore all of the requirement symbols this way. You must have at least one of the required symbols. Place the discarded cards in any order on the bottom of the corresponding decks. Cards are an important part of the game. Carefully selecting and playing them will earn you the victory points you need to win. When planning your strategy, pay attention to the layout of cards in each deck. You can find helpful information about this at the back of the rulebook. You already know how to draw and play cards. Now let's talk about the campfire board that will allow you to fulfil your strategies even better. When performing an action on your turn, you may place a path token in one of the notches on the campfire board. After placing the token, perform the action indicated on its bottom part. Take any face-up card from the main board and refill the empty spot with the top card of the corresponding deck. You cannot play a card this turn. Take two road tokens and place them in your surroundings area with the road symbol facing up. You cannot play a card this turn. Look at the top three cards of a chosen deck in a holder on the main board. Add one of them to your hand and put the other cards on the bottom of the deck in any order. You cannot play a card this turn. Play up to two cards from your hand into your meadow or surroundings area. In a two and three player game, you can also use a path token with a question mark. Placing this token in a campfire board notch allows you to take any, chosen by you, special action. Note that if you chose one of the first three mentioned special actions, you cannot play any cards. Placing a path token in a notch of the campfire board also allows you to fulfill goals. During setup, you placed goal tokens on the campfire board. The neighbouring goal tokens create pairs. If you have both symbols of the pair visible in your meadow area, after placing a path token in the notch of the campfire board, you may claim the space between the pair with one of your bonus tokens. You decide if you want to place the bonus token before, during or after taking the special action. Place the bonus tokens on the campfire board starting with the lowest valued ones. First two, then three and four at the end. Remember, only one bonus token can be placed between each pair of symbols. During your turn, you can place only one bonus token on the campfire board, even if you have more symbols that fulfill several goals. The campfire board gives one more possibility. You can play the path token on an unoccupied bench on the campfire board, which will allow you to play one card in your meadow or surroundings area. However, use this only if you really need to play a card and the current game situation doesn't allow you to do that. When all players have placed all their path tokens, the round ends. You collect all your path tokens and the player who started the round passes the first player token to the player on their left. This person will be the first player in the next round. Move the round marker to the next spot. When the round marker passes the hourglass symbol, additionally, discard all of the cards from the main board and randomly place them on the bottom of the corresponding decks. Replace the S deck holder with the N deck holder, refill the board with new cards from the corresponding decks, 
The arrows will help you pick the right columns. Continue the game according to the normal rules. The game ends at the end of the final round. The round when you place the round marker on the last spot on the round tracker. You count your victory points from the cards played in your meadow and surroundings areas, as well as your bonus tokens from the campfire board. Cards remaining in your hand do not give you any victory points. This is the same with unused bonus tokens. You do not get any victory points for them. The winner is the player with the most victory points. In case of a tie, the winner is the player with the most discovery cards played. If you have the same number of discovery cards, you share the victory. Congratulations! You learned all of the rules for playing Meadow. If you want to increase your collection, go back to the envelopes with expansions. It is assumed that you should open the envelopes after fulfilling certain requirements. But do not take that too seriously. It's all about having fun. Meadow also allows for solo gameplay. Test yourself in a duel with Rover and beat your own scores. You will find the rules for the solo variant and card sets in envelopes in the rulebook in the box. If you want to learn more about the flora, fauna, buildings and objects that are on the cards, check the card index. It's full of very interesting information. You can learn more about us and our games on our website, Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to rate Meadow on Board Game Geek. Start your journey into nature.